Okay, so let's get the MOSFET pump and soil moisture sensor hooked up to our Grove beginner kit for Arduino. I'm going to start with the MOSFET board, and I want to point out that there's a negative symbol, as you can see here on the right-hand side terminal, and that corresponds to the black wire for your 9-volt battery. Okay, so I'm going to open that up. And, and if you take a look when you're using the flathead screwdriver in here, there's a little riser that goes up and down a little bit like an elevator. And so you want to practice that before you get those wires stuck in there. So I'm going to take that black wire that has a little bit of, of uh, metal sticking out of it. And I'm going to put it in and I'm going to screw it in like that on the negative terminal. I'm going to make sure that it holds in place by tugging on it slightly. Now I'm going to do it to the positive wire, the red wire. Okay. I'm going to eventually plug in 9 volt batteries to it. Let's take a look at that 9 volt battery. And the 9 volt battery is about 9 volts. In this case it'll be eh, about 8 point something volts. It's close enough. And uh, you'll notice that on one side of the 9 volt battery there is a minus sign that's negative or the ground um, or, or 0 volt connection. And then on the other side there's the positive symbol. That's the 9 volt side. I'm going to plug it in to the MOSFET board and you can see that I can even test on the terminals of the MOSFET board to make sure that the 9-volt battery is connected properly. All right, let's do that again here. So I'm testing the terminals on the MOSFET board to show that there is about 9 volts going in on that one side. Okay, now we're going to eventually, and oh yeah, and you might want to think about using rechargeable batteries as well. So there are rechargeable 9-volt batteries that you can use too. All right, so just like that. All right, so we're going to be powering that 9-volt um, into the MOSFET board. And now I've got to connect up the pump. Now, the pump has a barrel jack connector on it. I've got an old 5-volt AA battery uh, pack that has the right terminal on it. I'm going to cut it. You would have had one in your in your um, kit. I didn't have one, so I, I sacrificed my AA battery holder. I'm going to strip the wires using a wire stripper right here. You can do something similar. And what we're trying to do is get a little bit of the sheath, the plastic on the edge of the um, of the wire off, so that you're you've got a couple of millimeters of exposed copper underneath. And these uh, wire strippers, they're about ten bucks at, at a hardware store, but you can use scissors if you're careful as well. Okay, and I twist the ends so they don't fray. Okay, so I twist them like that. And now I'm going to stick the black terminal, okay, for this right here into the GND side. And the red wire is going to go into the out label, okay, of my terminal. So I'm using the other terminal now on the MOSFET board. And um, let's take a look at that, that riser, okay? So if I, uh, if I turn the terminal right there, you'll end up seeing that it, it goes up and down like a little elevator. See the little piece of metal that goes up and down like a little elevator? That's what you're supposed to be using to catch and hold on to pinch effectively the wire, okay? So you want to get it all the way down and then you pull that little piece of metal back up and it pinches the wire in place. Okay, so I'm going to pinch first the black and now the red, like that. Okay, so I'm going to make that little elevator move up and it pinches things in place, just like that. All right, and I pull, I tug just to make sure everything's connected and stays connected. Now I'm going to use that barrel jack, connect up my pump to the other side, the output side effectively, of my MOSFET board. Now I'm going to take the tube and I'm going to attach to the barbed end of the pump that holds the pump in, uh, the, the tube in place. Okay. Just like that. And I'll be using that to pump water out. So the, the pump has two ends, one that's barbed and the other one that isn't. The one that isn't is the inlet, the barbed end is the outlet. Now I need to put a Grove 
cable, a four wire cable on here. And there are two types of these cables, one with a, a barb on it, a little hook, and the other one without this one, I believe is the one that doesn't have the hook on it. And I'm looking for a spare digital input. It turns out D7 is not currently being used. If you look around the board, there's no D7 in use. So I'm going to plug it into where D7 is marked. So my MOSFET, which is also plugged into my pump, is connected to D7 on my board. Next up, I'm going to look at connecting up analog. And it turns out that a lot of the analog is already taken. A0 is taken, for instance. I want to plug into A1. So I'm going to do it by connecting into the yellow terminals, ground, then red goes into plus five. And then I will connect up the yellow right there to A1. That's one way. So if you've got a cable like that, you can do that. But your kits come with a grove to grove connector. Okay. In this case, I've made one ahead of time where I've swapped the yellow and the white around. A regular one, a regular cable that comes out of the box doesn't have that swap. So I got to change the yellow and the white around. You can see it's crossed over on the left hand side. I cross it over. Normally they're not crossed over. And that allows me to use the third pin on the Grove connector for bringing in my analog value because the potentiometer is used on A0. It's also available there on A0, but the third pin on there is A1. Okay, pin four is A0, pin three is A1. We want to use A1, and the only way we can do that uh, in this particular case is to cross over the yellow and the white to route the last uh, signal into the third position. Okay, so how do we do that? We do it like this. We take that flathead screwdriver and we lift the little piece of plastic that holds the pin in place. So I'm going to lift it. So I'm going to remove the yellow wire and lift the little piece of plastic right there. You got to be careful not to break it. So I'm going to lift it up a little bit and pull out the yellow. Done. Now I'm going to pull out the white. Same, same deal. I lift the little plastic tab. I, yank, I, I sort of gently tug on the white wire and it came out. There you go, like that. So yellow and white are out now because I pulled on that little tab. Now I'm going to swap the yellow and white around from their original position. So yellow goes into the third position and white goes into the fourth position. All right, and that's a cable swap. It's a good idea to label that cable as having been swapped, like you can see in that other cable that I did. I put a little piece of tape on it. It's a good idea to do that. Okay, now I can plug in my soil moisture sensor. And we can see that there, there's no swap, but at the other end, there's the swap. You only need to do one swap. Okay, you can see the swap right there. All right, so now the signal is being routed into A1 instead of A0, but on the A0 connector. All right, let's see if this actually works for real using some Arduino code. Okay, so we're going to plug in the USB and then we're going to see if the Arduino code will work. Now, of course, you're supposed to program this all in Java. This is just a proof of concept. So here's some Arduino code that I programmed up real quick. And you can see that the pump is in fact working on D7. That's fantastic. You can hear it. You hear that? That's the pump in action. All right. So now let's take a look at the soil moisture sensor. We're routing the value to the serial terminal. And if I put my finger on it and then release it, you can see the analog value is changing between 580 and 760 or so.